start. Yes, thank you. Hello, good evening, everyone. My name is Esther Schmidt. I'm the director of the Center for Historic Houses of India at OP Jinda Global University Institution of Eminence. I welcome you all. Thank you very much. A, a great thank you, particularly to our speakers. This is a very, very special event. We have organized many webinars. And if you look at our YouTube channel, we have two lecture series. One is called Resilience Historic Houses of India and Their Custodians. The other one is um, Great Minds in Heritage and Historic Houses. This lecture is really special because um, it's a lifetime of research in Indian art and architecture that you will hear today. I have asked the speakers to come together to present, um, um, to present this lecture on Bundi, which is one of the most fascinating historic houses in India, to, um, um, to rediscover and revisit some of their research that, ha that they have done a long time ago, more than 30 years ago. I think it's personally, as a scholar, very interesting to, re to revisit some old work that you have done. And um, not only this, but in fact, we are going to see some photographs today of wall paintings that you will not be able to see again because they have faded and the color is no longer the same. So this is truly unique. These are unpublished photographs, and I'm very excited about this. This event uh, will consist of two parts. In the beginning, we are having an introduction about the architecture, the landscape, the geography of Bundi. In the second part uh, with Professor Bautze, we have um, a lecture on the wall paintings. And just a few words about our speakers and then I won't say anything more because I'm sure you're all eager to hear the topic and to hear the speakers themselves. Um, Professor um, Attilio Petrocioli, is an ICOMOS and UNESCO expert, professor of landscape architecture at the Università di Roma La Sapienza. He was also the director of the Aga Khan program at MIT and Harvard University. He has written and edited 35 books in more than 220 articles. Dr. Joachim Bautze is an independent scholar with interests that include Mughal architecture, Mughal painting, and Persian and Indian miniature painting. He was the head of the art history department at the South Asia Institute in, in Heidelberg and also professor in Tokyo and a visiting professor at the Freie University. Professor Attilio will be giving the lecture with his two assistants who were then, I think, PhD students at the time. And the challenge for everyone who is studying historic buildings in India is the fact that very often we don't have enough um, sources, written sources. And this is usually what especially European scholars are used to. So that is a huge challenge. And today we are having a very special presentation because Professor Attilio developed a way of like a detective discovering the history of the building through a specific study of the building. And that makes it so unique. So I'm handing it over now to our speakers. Thank you um, very much um, for being here. Okay, um, thank you. And uh, we are now, um, my name is Claudio B, uh, I'm PhD architect, and uh, um, I'm delighted to be here. And uh, I would like just to uh, um, start our presentation. And uh, Okay. Can you see the image? Yes. Okay, so. Just taking a back in position in order to. Uh, can you hear me well from, from this point? Yes. Okay, fine. So. Um, 
I want to just start to uh, have a glimpse of the uh, uh, Bundi city and uh, uh, Bundi landscape uh, through uh, this uh, hunting scene uh, in 1832. Uh, which is quite in, uh, interesting because uh, giving the chance to, to talk about uh, uh, the way Bundi is uh, connected through uh, a road map uh, to the um, territory of uh, Rajasthan, which is the uh, role of Bundi city into the area of Rajputana, and, uh, um, and what the, uh, the, the sense of the um, um, settlement of the element that are contributing to the uh, urban and uh, territorial settlement of the city of Bumi. Um, the map I show you, I'm showing here, um, give you the sense of the uh, uh, geographical um, uh, area of Rajasthan and uh, uh, closer states in northwestern India. What I like to underline is uh, are different um, elements which are in the uh, um, red uh, lines. So first of all, uh, um, the system, uh, let me just start, sorry. Oh, okay, with the pointer, okay. Uh, first of all, I would like uh, to uh, underline this railroad, which is the one connecting the uh, Punjab to the uh, um, Indian Ocean and the uh, Gulf of Bengal. And uh, from this, uh, another important element uh, of, of uh, the um, uh, way to, to cover the distances uh, through the Rajasthan from Delhi and Agra to the Ahmedabad and the sea again in the area of Gujarat. And um, this link is quite important because uh, it's um, just lapping the uh, Arval range. Uh, that plays a, a role very uh, extremely important, even in cultural terms in Rajasthan, because it's dividing Rajasthan in two main areas. The one connected with the landscape of jungles to the, to the east, and the other uh, with the landscape of desert, so the most arid uh, zones uh, going through the uh, today Pakistan, so the, the desert of Tar uh, close to the boundary of, um, of Pakistan. And along this path, uh, there are some of the main important cities in Rajasthan, like uh, Amber first, like of course, Ajmer, and then Gaipur. Um, what is important for Bumbi is the uh, cross way that uh, uh, passing through Ajmer, which is uh, the one connecting the Tar Desert to the central area of India. That means to the area related to the falls along the Narmada River, which is dividing the um, Hindustan from the camp. So two different cultural areas in India and subcontinent. And uh, Bundi is quite important in this location because it plays the role of a kind of uh, gate into the, the southern gate uh, to the reign of the Rajas, so the, the, the Rajputana area. And, uh, uh, this is a, a point that could be underlined with uh, this image, where um, even the title of this image, the, the, ta the town and pass of Bundi in Rajputana. So uh, what I would like to underline is, is the, the use of the term pass. So it's the place where you can cross uh, a physical gate along the Hindu, uh, pardon, in, along the uh, Bundi field, the Bundi range. So Bundi, the city of Bundi from the hilltop, uh, is just controlling this key point into the main uh, structures of the roads of uh, Rajasthan and former uh, Rajputana. If from this image, it is possible to also uh, see some of the elements that are related to what we, we may call uh, a territorial types. A territorial types, I mean a sort of code or settlement in, uh, in Rajasthan, which is closely related to uh, uh, the way uh, Rajput kings controlled the territory and established points of control into the territory and northern point into that territory. So um, from this is made, from this image, we can uh, clearly see the target forum, the Pintal. This is the military point of control of, to, in, toward the valley below. 
tea palace, so the, the, the residence, the place of residence of the Maharaja, which is in, on the middle of the hill, uh, of the slope of the hill top. And uh, at the bottom, the urban fabric, so the city and the city walls here, and uh, the defensive system of the, of the city and the several chatrices scatters on the other in top, even um, encircling uh, the area of the, of the city, which um, permit to control, uh, um, provide control to, uh, uh, to the valley. And uh, uh, from this, um, I would like to uh, note one uh, further element. So I would like to explain why we were talking about uh, a type of uh, settlement. A type means, uh, I was saying before, a code. A code means that there is a, a common and shared way to uh, transform the territory and to settle the territory. Um, so the case of Bundi is not the only one with this kind of, uh, uh, of settlement and element structuring the elements. Uh, most of the city related to the presence of a, of a court of the Rajas showed the, the same um, uh, layout of the, um, of, the, of, of the landscape and the territory. So a hilltop fort, of course, a, a middle, um, a, 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 the, 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 the palace of the Maharaja on the middle of a slope, the, the city below, and an uh, integrated system of uh, uh, water structures uh, that give the possibility to talk about uh, a landscape of waters, um, the relationship between the political and military power and waters is extremely important. And every one of these elements are underlying these pictures. So the main pass, the guard pass, the hill for top, and uh, some places we will see later in, in other pictures of the city are obviously strictly related with the um, necessity to provide water to the uh, enclave of the palace, to the city, to the single neighborhoods inside of the city. And uh, um, this map um, of the um, end of 19th uh, uh, century um, allow us to underline the same elements on a uh, flat way. You know? So it, we, we can see here uh, in this point uh, the location of the uh, target for the controlling the valley here and uh, the network of roads that are going to the north, so to Delhi and Jaipur, uh, to the west uh, in direction of Ajmer and then. Uh, uh, the area uh, crossing the uh, valley, uh, the valley hill uh, in, uh, in the area of the Atar Desert. And to the south, to the south, especially towards Kota, where there is a ford uh, along the river, along the Chamba River, uh, another key point in the territory uh, that are connected with the road to the uh, central India and then to the, the camp to the south. Um, in this map, it's possible also to see here in this place uh, the guard palace uh, and uh, uh, the system of the urban fabric. So, here inside the city wall, the first phase uh, uh, of the city wall, and the extension of the city, the, the um, so neighborhood of a later. Uh, development, uh, but later, I mean, not medieval, but uh, the colonial period of the uh, development uh, of the city. Um, and also the other elements I was mentioning before, so the water statues. So the first time here with the uh, uh, Jain Sagar to the north, where here there is a small pavilion related to the presence of Udia Kipling uh, in, uh, in the valley. And uh, here the uh, Dava Sagar just uh, below uh, the uh, Main palace, so the main port of the um, uh, Rajput court. And uh, um, in this picture, we may see all these elements uh, um, in a glimpse. So these pictures are being taken from the Targar fort, and just showing the uh, system, the defensive system of the area of the fort and uh, the well connected in. Defensive term, I mean, 
uh, the well connected system of the Garda Palace uh, with the uh, uh, defensive wall of the palace, and uh, again the area of the urban fabric uh, below the Naval Sagar, which is uh, we will see this in, uh, in, in the last picture I was talking about. Uh, um, we will see the relationship between uh, uh, this water uh, surface and uh, um, the, the palace and the other palaces, like the Swan di Motimal, uh, I was talking about uh, the main at the end of this presentation, uh, which are all of them related to the um, uh, presence of the political and military power in the, in the Bundi, in Bundi area and in Bundi city. This map is just a synthesis of what are the, um, uh, the area of the urban fabric and the main gate um, along the, uh, the, the city wall. And what I would like to uh, underline in this picture is the presence of a smaller gate, each one with this smaller uh, dot here in brown, which are uh, related to the single mahalas, so the single neighborhood, uh, of the uh, of the inside the urban uh, the urban fabric. Um, from uh, um, this map, uh, we can now move to see this picture, which is, which is quite interesting for me uh, because uh, give you a glimpse of the defensive system of the uh, um, of the Bundi complexes of the uh, uh, Royal Palace and the Targa Fort, but. Uh, allow me also to introduce another uh, element uh, related to uh, the use of waters uh, inside the, um, into the palace and uh, in the uh, area of the urban fabric. Uh, this picture uh, shows us um, this bracket, the, the stone brackets and beams, which are one and these two related to a tower. Um, like a water lift, is a, these are the water towers like the ones we have in the palace of the Maraja in Hamburg, for instance. And uh, there's a small basin uh, below this tower that allow the um, people living into the palace to provide water to the Persian wheels um, on top of the palace and the area, in, in the area of the uh, Charbag and the hanging garden inside the palace. The map here is just showing the water system into the city. So we can see the tanks inside the area of Targa Fort that allow the Targa Fort to be uh, independent in the use of water. Uh, the, um, the area of the Naval uh, um, Sagar, just below uh, the area of the palace, uh, several um, step was inside the city, each one again related with a single neighborhood in the, um, within the urban fabric. And uh, the other elements like uh, uh, bigger kundas, uh, like this one uh, we will see in a picture later, or the Rani Pijikiba only here, or the twin kundas just in front of the Chogan gate. Uh, each of one of these related to a processional route uh, inside the city, the urban fabric connected each other, the southern gate, the southern gate, uh, to this way, to the uh, main area of the palace. And uh, uh, so just three pictures, and then I would like to, to uh, uh, hand over to Professor Perlucioi to talk about the past, the Gar past, three pictures of what are the uh, examples of the water structure inside the city, like this small step on your countryside. Um, so each one, of course, in India is always like this, this is well known. Uh, each one of these structures is, is like a shrine or a small temple. And uh, uh, stepwells like this, this, of this size, are the ones related with the single neighborhoods inside the urban fabric. Uh, then we have the exceptional and extraordinary example of the uh, Ranch Tibaoli built in uh, 1699 by Rani Natalaji. Uh, which is uh, an example, an extraordinary example of patronage from the royal court to, uh, at the service of the, uh, of the city and uh, of the inhabitants of Bundi, which is also um, a, a, a place where we can um, see a lot of small shrine uh, inside, uh, um, inside the, the, the step, well, uh, which is the uh, 
terminal element of the processional route uh, connecting the Gar Palace to the Chogan Gate. And the last, uh, the, um, the Kundas, the Daibaijika Kunda, um, in the area of the um, colonial extension of the uh, urban capital. The last map, and uh, I hope to be in time with uh, uh, this presentation, the last map I'd like to show you is uh, uh, this one. That is a kind of zoning uh, related to uh, the uh, religious uh, um, index uh, settlement of the Bundi uh, city with the uh, Hindu um, uh, neighborhood in orange, uh, the brown uh, related to the Muslim area, the uh, Jaina wines related to the yellow wines, and the uh, mixed areas uh, close to the uh, uh, boundary of the city, the city wall uh, that are actually mm, that show the presence of different um, classes and uh, uh, religious group. What is interesting for me in this map, what is most interesting, and I would like to underline again, is the alignment of the main uh, um, complexes uh, related to the um, uh, Rajput court. So the Targar Fort, the Gar Palace, and the Moti Mahal, the, the Palace of the Princess of the Court, uh, just uh, uh, a way to, to create a bank, a dam here, Along the uh, uh, the Davar Saga, so uh, this is a way to underline not only in a geometric way but even in a visual way uh, to underline the presence of the uh, uh, royal court into the uh, into the city of Ubudu. So now uh, with this picture, I'm going to hand over to Mr. Petrucciani, who's going to go deeper into the description of the uh, Bundika uh, parts, please. Uh, uh, good afternoon. Uh, the, uh, the, the image of the uh, southern elevation of the, of the Gar Palace is extremely intriguing uh, because uh, it, it is like a projected uh, structure that is behind and the, the, the different passes pa pa that are that are behind and uh, that is also the, the only place where we have a clear idea of the organization of the artificial terraces created by the uh, the, the Rajputs in order to create platforms on which the palace actually grew um, uh, you see here this line, this line basically corresponds to the first platform uh, uh, on which the uh, oldest part of the, of the palace, the Zenana, we assume, with the, with the Zenana uh, stands, on which we, um, the um, Rao Hodge uh, uh, Palace, Mayao, stands, and on which also the Chatra Mahal stands on two levels here, here. So the terrace goes in this direction. It is uh, about four, four and a half meters above the uh, Divanyam that is behind, for those that I know the palace, otherwise we will remember this, this notion. And then we have another, another plat platform that is created here that is at the same level of the Divanyam. Uh, one uh, important note is that uh, there are uh, different styles also along the facade. Uh, you can clearly uh, detect that the older past is a dana. There is a modern uh, addition made uh, here, very, very recent, probably the end of the 19th century, even the beginning of the, 19th, of the 20th century. Then we have uh, just a small se separation, and then the the large palace. It is interesting because this separation has been filled later on. Originally, this was a, a sort of canyon, let's say, uh, on which the western uh, elevation of the of the of the large palace, which is this one, was facing in this direction, and there were also the Rome and so on. 
then it, it, it became heat field and then it used for certain spaces and so on. Um, as, you, as you can see, uh, the, this the, the, the old complex, uh, the, the uh, zenithal uh, view, and uh, we see that uh, the, uh, the, all the palace is divided in several components, and more or less for two main alignments. Okay, you see here the Zenana, the original space, with the, the addition of the first uh, apartments of the Maharaja. What I, uh, I said, uh, it was a sort of modern uh, uh, infield. The Rao, Rao, Rao Gorge Palace, the terrace on which the Rao, uh, the Rao Gorge Palace stands, and uh, the Chattar Mahal, the top of the Chattar Mahal that is here. Then you have uh, uh, some secondary extensions of the, of the, of the Zadana that you see here now. Until you reach the cenotaph number three on the, on the higher level, and then suddenly the other buildings they take a different direction. It is interesting to note that this alignment of the uh, of the divanyam uh, of the copper chalk of the divanyam, etc. They are perfectly aligned north south, and uh, there's no real topographical reason, probably, to have this uh, distortion and uh, realignment along this uh, north south uh, orientation, uh, unless there is an important statement behind. I will come back on this on this problem later on. Uh, you will see also very, uh, very, very interesting the other platform, artificial platform that supports the um, Charla number 11, and uh, with the, the, uh, the, 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 the Chita Sala and other uh, annexes, uh, we will talk a bit later on. The, uh, the, the, the original, uh, the original Zadana is here, and uh, we have uh, located the Zadana here, also according to a process of growth and transformation of the, of the palace, uh, the, of the, of the Rajputs, that we have also realized in, uh, and seen in other contexts. One is Ampere, for instance, where uh, the, at the origin, before the new growth, they used to lead to, 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 to have a big enclosure surrounded by, uh, by um, spaces and uh, groups and cells, and would say, that uh, slowly, slowly became more specialized, you know, in order to, uh, uh, to perform different, different functions besides the domestic functions of the normal, uh, normal house. And uh, this uh, uh, character of the presence in the same place of the of activities of the of the newer palace, uh, like also the, the, the more public and so on, it was a characteristic of that time. But then, uh, the, uh, when they uh, met the newer and they accepted the uh, habits and tradition of the of the of the, of the new goals, including the layout of the palace that was typical the layout organized and divided between in spaces that had function that they used to go from the most public the the the, the, the to, to less more private the divan cast and in any case public activity of the, of the ministers, and then separate the Zenana. What occurred is that in those structures uh, with mixed functions, you know, they became uh, specific, secluded, spe uh, specialized uh, spaces for the Zenana exclusively, copied uh, from the uh, mutual uh, tradition, let's say. 
Um, so if uh, this is the, as I said, you reach, and then you see the growth into the this platform, the robots palace, the small seizure here that was uh, on which there was also the elevation of the western elevation of the palace, and this uh, uh, angle chalk that originally most probably was extended up to here. We can understand by the strange position nowadays of this pool here that is eccentric, out of the center, without much logic, unless we understand that the Rao Bunch encroached the or, an original uh, larger space, and then uh, the uh, chakra and, uh, and so on. Number eight is the chalk of the of the of the uh, divanyam and uh, you see in front of it the Atipo, the, uh, the uh, official address to all that complex. The, uh, we also presume that uh, the original core of the, of the past was the Zanana, because uh, this uh, clear, definite structure, regular and based on the modular, uh, can be built only if you don't have a pre-existence that will create constraints and deform your, your, your form. It is uh, characterized by a very clear uh, courtyard, uh, we call that a nodal space, simple space, surrounded by regular cells, and also characterized by an entrance that originally uh, was probably a flight of steps uh, climbing from the uh, from the lower level straight into the central part of the of the of the quarter itself, characterized also by uh, specialized uh, corner spaces that we call antinomal, that is opposite to the nodal decentrality of it. And uh, uh, it is interesting to note that uh, this axiality in, it, in reality it is completely continuously broken by doggy legs uh, movement, you know, that creates filters uh, of the movement of the axis into the uh, into the core of the of the zenana itself. According, uh, according to the uh, layout and the distribution of the functions and the spaces, according to the structures uh, used in the different uh, uh, in the different places of the palace, and uh, finally the stylistic elements, uh, we uh, arrive to a, a, a reasonable, uh, hypothetical in a way chronological growth of our, uh, of our past. From, uh, from top left, you know, we have the first platform that supports the, uh, the, the palace, that is a regular uh, uh, cubic structure with, uh, with, uh, with, a, with a regular uh, courtyard, that's it. And, uh, the, uh, and the access with the flight of stairs from this point. Uh, later on, we have an extension of the platform uh, in this direction, on which uh, it is built to be Raubach Palace, and the extensions of the, of the Zinana itself on the upper part towards the west of the, of the system, that, uh, it is, that require a careful analysis, you know, basically room by room in order to date them exactly. In that phase, we have the, uh, the, um, the post, uh, uh, the same branch period and the meeting, the meet with, uh, the meeting with the, with the, with the new goals, the adaptation uh, of the, of the um, typical spaces for the uh, new government. That is the, uh, in particular, the Divan Yam and the Divan Pass, the space for the public audiences and the space for the private audiences that you see here. Uh, this includes also upper spaces, spaces that are built also further, uh, immediately after 
on top of the uh, of the uh, of the of the Divanian itself. Uh, fourth stage uh, is the uh, the uh, creation of the Rakan Mahal as a, a located on uh, on this platform here that you have there. It's here, and uh, the. Um, uh, a fractal level on top of the Divanian that includes the uh, um, spaces that are uh, of service of the that also are shared between the the, 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 the Divanian and uh, the more public areas. The, the further to the to the north, we have later on the creation of the artificial platform that supports the char bar and the uh, facing spaces of the Chikra Sala, for instance, and uh, the Grand Venus Palace. To conclude, and, uh, we have the imposing very strong structure uh, that uh, was used again for the, for this, for the Zenana itself, that could be uh, probably for the concubines, used by the concubines. Uh, there, much more recent, that has also a certain analogy with uh, the um, similar structure that uh, can, can be found in, uh, in the, um, in the Naga Fort uh, on top of John Guru, where we had the similar structure but more open and so on. This one probably can be dated uh, in, the, uh, in the 18th century. Um, the, um, the, the, um, the Zenana space, the core of the Zenana space that uh, uh, I have uh, I mentioned, that is, uh, uh, this, that is particularly notable for the famous wing, the seven feet of height, that is right there in the, in the middle of the courtyard. And it's characterized by this uh, strong square surrounded by uh, a, a, a continuous. Uh, organic growth of uh, apartments of, of, the, of the various ladies and uh, the uh, addition of the apartments of the Maharaja that are organized as an L form around this uh, courtyard, this courtyard here that are facing the city that is, uh, that is below. This uh, complicated axonometrical representation of it uh, with exploded parts and so on, difficult to understand, but um, uh, particularly attractive for the architect. But I show this only to underline the system of growth of the, of the courtyard that uh, grows in the height, uh, levels on top of uh, levels, but also uh, using uh, the hanging courtyard systems that allow to enlarge, to, uh, to accommodate the, the, the extension of the Zanana also on the natural uh, slope of the, of, the, of the hill, and also to give uh, more and more uh, light and, uh, and air to more uh, apartments that can be extended in every direction. Um, this is a view that shows uh, the, uh, the entrance to the, to the, to the courtyard of the, of the Zanana, the arrival of the flight of the steps here, a little piece of the, of the monumental swing. And in this corner here, particularly at this level, the ap private apartments of the Maratha, the oldest ones. Because then slowly they shifted towards the uh, to, towards the east, uh, and most probably in the first in the Rao Rao Poch uh, uh, Mahal. A section uh, just uh, shows better this idea of creating hanging courtyards, you know, one on top of the other that can give light to more and more and more apartments. 
And uh, it shows that the northern uh, facade of the courtyard, and that is the most monument, it totally was symmetrical. That uh, also has a, a, a sort of stratification also of languages that uh, are moving more, more and more into the, uh, into the more uh, 17th century and so on. The, the using elements like the Bandanda that definitely are uh, more recent. Now we move to the other side, to the east. Uh, Part of the east side of the of the, of the palace, and we uh, enter into the palace through the monument, the palace itself, through the monumental gate called Hadi Pole uh, with the two turrets and uh, the gallery of the Natakana. Um, that was uh, uh, the, uh, the the space where the drums and uh, the orchestra used to. Uh, uh, to rhythm the day of the Marajas and also to, uh, to, uh, to host the arrival of uh, foreigners or ambassadors, etc. So we enter into the space from here and uh, we are now in the, we enter from the, from the upper hall, we have the space of the Nakarakane and we enter into the chalk of the uh, of the divanam and the space here that's called the uh, ratan ratan mahal i think ratan dolat ratan dolat that was the space of the divanam itself with the jaroka that allowed the uh, I mean the seat of the of the of the Maharaja, but also the possibility of the Maharaja to be seen during the uh, the uh, when the event of the Jaroka Darshan was performed, in which he used to show himself to the to the to the population from a window. In this case, from this uh, uh, Jaroka. Most interesting is uh, this flight of steps, that is the flight that uh, goes up, up, up into the, uh, into the Zanana, originally uh, open to the sky, and then slowly encroach the way there's a, a, a sequence of, uh, of, of rooms creating a sort of filters from the public space into the most secluded space of the Zanana. Um, the, uh, on the opposite, in the northern facade, we have the entrance to the the access to the to the um, to the uh, Ratan Dolak with the flight with the ramp that goes up to here and then ramp the entrance here. Of course, uh, the uh, it was also possible to access uh, at a different uh, code, at uh, a different level of, uh, of the of this uh, Ratan Dolak. It was possible to go into the flight of steps and then uh, reach the Zenat only for the uh, people allowed, and it's uh, the, uh, the Maharaja itself. Um, this is the, uh, the opposite, uh, opposite view, if you want, towards the south, uh, to the left, uh, the, the, the the uh, Atipol with the with the Nakarene, and uh, to the to the right of the building that includes the, the that includes the uh, the Ratan Dolat and the stables probably at the bottom, and uh, you see the flat step that goes up into this into the um, Zenara itself. Uh, a section cut uh, east-west through it, uh, you, through, the, through the entrance, the uh, the Atipol, uh, the level, this is the level of the stables, the level of the of the uh, dola, uh, the uh, rat, ratan dola. Okay, you see the little the little jaroka of the of the Maharaja and the upper levels here, um, a gallery. The entrance to the to the 
Ratangama. And the, this is the level of the char path, which is on uh, Janoga here. No comment. This is the Jaroga of the of the uh, Look overlooking into the into the into the the courtyard, the chalk uh, from inside. It's a it's a it's a uh, Ipo style hall with uh, posts and beams. You know, as according to a, a diffuse condition, contracting condition, and. Uh, this is a, 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 probably the most interesting part of the, of, the, of, the, of, of, the, of the palace because it contains uh, the um, two more interesting buildings from the stylistic point of view and also from the uh, masterpieces that, of frescoes that contain in gray. The, um, um, Rao, Boch, um, Mahal, and uh, the uh, uh, Chatar Mahal here. This is cut at the, at the level of the, of, the, of the terrace that contains uh, uh, this, uh, this space that most, more probably, which is composed of three rooms that is uh, anticipated by a, a sort of hypostyle porch open into the terrace. On the, symmetrically on the other side, we have this uh, hypostyle space that is open into this uh, courtyard that is shared in the wall. That contains uh, this, uh, this is the, the, the most, those are the most interesting uh, spaces. It is controversial, the chronology of this area, because uh, the, both, case, both cases could be possible. Number one, that uh, this platform arriving up to here and then later on built up to here was a, 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 an ending chalk that later on was uh, encroached and uh, uh, built in this part and by the palace on three levels of the Rao, Rao Bodge. Um, or, and then later on, uh, two level palace was built here by, by the sun, Chatrao. Or most probably they are almost contemporary and this is uh, probably uh, an hypothesis that is uh, um, also emphasized by the strange location of this pool here, totally eccentric, you know, uh, in relation with the, with the hanging pool, hanging terrace. Um, that, uh, in reality, the uh, terrace uh, was here, and uh, that, uh, you know, the uh, palace was planned in this position, the chakra, and then later on, the, this one uh, uh, was encroached in this position. Um, this is a view towards the sea of this angling court, a shared between the, the, uh, the um, Ra uh, Rabot uh, Palace to the, to the right and the Dichaka Mahaya to the, to the, to the left. Um, finally, uh, another uh, artificial platform built out of substructure completely supports uh, the uh, the most uh, the most uh, most known uh, area and, uh, of the of the of this uh, char park that is a total hanging uh, garden um, uh, located to the to the uh, northeast part of the, of the palace. You see here uh, the uh, part portion of the of the Divanya chalk, and then uh, the uh, Ratan Dalat here, right here, and then uh, the, the sequence of coordinates uh, on, uh, on, on the upper level, reachable either from the Sedana, from the 
from the lateral gamma or the, the, or the Java, and that included the um, Chitasala, the weakest part, weakest part to, the, to, the, to the right, and uh, uh, not defined functions uh, can be attributed to those uh, crossing, uh, hanging towards the courts that are here, for instance. And uh, in, the, in the back, if you see the last part, the Aniruddha palace, uh, that is the, the last uh, palace that was designed in the application. Um, uh, uh, finally, is the view of the of the of the of the of the Charva. It is an uh, interesting to note uh, that I forgot to mention before, but the platform in reality is irregular, and it's not clear the reason to make a Charva that is irregular, and then inventing a lot of uh, little tricks in order to uh, make this survival appear regular. Uh, the tool, the system of the channels, uh, the passages here, in reality, they appear perpendicular, but they are not. And um, so there, there are many um, visual and uh, techniques in order to re reorganize this space in a sort of regular space. It's not clear to me if this irregularity of the plan, which is a, a trapezoidal and not a square uh, area, depends on the topographical reason or not. Mm -hmm. My name is Domenico Catania. And um, this talk about the city again uh, underline how the territorial rules have influenced the urban structure of the building. In this slide, in this slide I point out the urban rules of the city. Uh, we can start from the primary rules in a, in a red dark. Uh, that inside on the territorial roots, uh, just mentioned by my colleague Claudio, and uh, link uh, together to four urban gates. Here, 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 and here. A proof of the importance of this route is the existence on them of the Sadar Bazar here. The Nagdi Bazaar and the Shudi Bazaar. And the more, uh, moreover, the, the presence of the most important Bauri and the religious architectures, such as the, uh, the Lakshmi Mandir here, uh, Radha Demutar Mandir. And uh, uh, Malasha Mandir, for example, here. From the principal routes, uh, depart through the gates, the second routes, red, uh, that structure the self suction uh, quarters, Mahala. Except of some rare example of the tertiary routes, those. The, the, that connection to secondary root, for example, here or here. Uh, we can notice the, uh, that from the secondary root, usually start several cul de sac routes in gray. Uh, this is a constant feature that is common to all urban tissue composed by courtyard houses, such as the Indian Park Avenue. In addition to the great urban polarities represented by the urban gates, uh, we would like to underline even the presence of, the, uh, of interesting nodalities, such as the urban node that is uh, created on the border between the area of the Hindu community and uh, the, the border between the other. The, into community and the area of the giant community in this part. 
in this case, <clears throat> perfectly iotide by the coexistence of the two temples facing uh, each other, expressing two uh, different architectural approaches. Radata Modar Mandir in Hindu area here, and Malasa Mandir in China area here. We can focus on uh, another monument building, uh, the <coughs> Moti Mahal. The Moti Mahal stands on the east shore of the uh, Navar Sagar, uh, down in the valley, at the edge of an axis in the north-south direction. That connects it with the Gar Palace and the Taragat Fort in strategic position from the hill. The three palaces are uh, connected by high roof. The entrance to the palace takes place uh, through an entrance near the Beiru Gate here. The palace presents some course aligned in north-south direction with the main axis and the north and the spaces that towards south from public become private. Once the port, uh, once the port closes, it's possible to arrive in the first entrance port, that is the introduction to the palace. The first port contains spaces emblematic of the palace, linked to the activity of the Maharaja Mardana, in the front of the entrance, there is a, a, a three-four building, three-four building that constitutes the, the part of the palace that uh, dominates the whole unit. Typologically, it is part of the palace replicated the Hatishal, the one in Hars of the Dark Palace, and the, the overlooking Badal Mahal. The ground floor is formed by an uh, hypostyle hall at the first and the second, the first, the first and the second floor. There are in a section a terrace, an hypostyle hall, and, and a room ending at the west with the Jarata. On the east side of the court, there are the uh, stables for horses, current seat of a private museum. Here. While at the north, there's the entrance to, uh, to a temple. In front of the stables, there are the servant quarters here. Over the hypostasis hall, at the ground floor, there is the entrance into the second court. Here. In this side of the court, there open, there opens at the ground floor another hypostasis hall. Endowed with the Jarrokada sun, to the east, uh, where the Maharaja Sudri showed at the sunrise. Yeah. The west side of the court, at the ground floor and the old first floor, also the apartments of the Maharaja. A monument entrance gives access to the third court here. Yeah. 
almost regular road that is closed towards the outside uh, with a square plan form of a by a whole of uh, single spaces overlooking the center of space through a portico. This nucleus uh, hosts the first Zenana of the palace, that is uh, the residence of the Manamis. The structure of the buildings is formed by the uh, repetition of apartments composed by two spaces, one rectangular for the architects and one private small. that uh, can be reached only by the first. The body of the third is uh, probably the most ancient nucleus of the complex. It's present in the typical structure of the first palaces, square plan, double symmetry, towards the north-south and the east-south axis. A street passage here takes in the fourth and the last court, seat of Zenana, formed by apartments delivered in a serial way. At the center, there is an octagonal grand, uh, temple. Grand temple. The old body. Uh, on the fourth was destined to the hosting of the Zenana since its uh, realization. The new system is a, a wider more made, made than the third court. It is possible to find the large space that hosts the small octagonal temple at the center, the sequence, the sequence of the apartments of the Maranis served by the portal. And the ground floor and the balcony and the first floor is similar. The apartments are, uh, are formed by two rooms. The first is a, a rectangular plan and uh, The second here more contains the dimensions. Each apartment has an independent state. In the core, there is also an hypostyle hall, richly decorated, and a temple in one of the spaces. The realization of the Serratus court can be thought as subsequent to the phase of completion of the first court. Is a matter of faith, uh, observing carefully the planetary disposition of these spaces. It's possible to see how the three monastery that closes that closes the west side of the port, and the being that to obtain the access to the, these apartments or to get small service spaces or widening of the room. To this space belongs the body of rooms of the west wing of the of this space of the second court that uh, widened the private room of the Maratha Maratha. Yeah. Both at the ground floor and the first floor. Thank you. Hi, thanks so much for this fascinating lecture. Could you kindly wrap it up a little bit because we are running slightly late and I don't want to cut into our last speaker's uh, lecture on the wall paintings. Thank you so much.
sorry, you, you just want to um, go ahead and finish? Well, yeah. Right. Um, thanks so much. Um, absolutely fascinating and meticulous research, and we can't help thinking of Kipling's. Um, it was more built by um, uh, goblins rather than by men. Absolutely amazing, the structure. Thank you so much. I'd like now to um, ask uh, Professor uh, Dr. Joachim Bautze to uh, take over and uh, um, present his lecture entitled Leisure and Pleasure in the Murals of Rao Ratan. Thanks, it is visible, but it's not expanded yet. Perfect. Thank you. Is this better? Yes, it's, it's perfect now. Thank you. Well, I see two different screens. Um, Gibt es ein technisches Problem? Jetzt ist weg. Um, try to get to it again. Wir sind nämlich ein bisschen mit der Zeit um, im Verzug. I, I know. Okay. Now it looks good. Okay. Ja, ja, danke. Well, good evening. Good afternoon. Maybe good morning for some and good night for those far, far away. Um, this is a photograph which supports a bit of what we have seen. Um, this is the old city wall as it was visible in about 1900. And this photograph is important, not only because it's one of the earlier photographs, but if you look properly, you can see that all these cupolas here were freshly whitewashed. It means at this time, this part of the palace was still inhabited. We are talking about Rao Ratan, who was the most famous ruler of Bundi, who helped to support the Mughal case, you see Erecto and Verso, Previously, this painting has been in the Royal Neva collection as uh, Andrew Topsfield has done a catalog of these things. And she has said Rao Ratan, Rao Ratan, Rao Ratan. And I don't know if this is a Hijri date, which would um, correspond to about 1700. We may not forget that this palace was inhabited until uh, recently. And of course, I had to speak to His Highness Ranjit Singhji of Bundi, um, who, uh, as you can see here, was present at the more important uh, family <laughs> meetings <laughs> of the Hara family. Um, this picture shows the situation of the Badal Mahal, 
Badal Mahal written with a long A at the beginning today, but actually Soyamala Mishwan in his Vangsh Bhaskar writes it with two short A's. And he says that this palace was built by Rao Bhoj, who was the father of Rao Ratan. In any event, um, the building activity started before 1607. This is the entrance situation. <clears throat> the doors are still closed. Um, at the beginning, it was very difficult to get access because um, parts of the palaces were still inhabited. I saw uh, furniture everywhere. Uh, the only person to grant access was the Raj Mata, who was staying, living in the Moti Mahal, which we have just seen. The problem was, as a male foreigner, um, I could not face Raj Mata uh, directly, so I had to find a female member of the Hara family, which I did in the shape of Shashi Palaita. And uh, Shashi Palaita from Kota could ask for the key. And uh, then I saw a hand with the key, which was given to Shashi Palaita. And these doors there in the center could open. What you see here is an old photograph. Old photograph means it was done before uh, let's say 1980, because in the later photographs, all the elephant brackets, sort of towel horses have disappeared. Um, I have seen some of these figures at Portobello Market. And um, this is uh, a, a ground plan, which shows the Ragamala and for the orientation, I labeled the elephants E and the horses P. And here you have a short scale. Now here it looks um, just uh, as a remembrance, the elephants and uh, here, for instance, a horse. Um, this photograph was published in a mark issue, which was edited by Andrew Topsfield and shows how the palace looks today. Most of the Badal Mahal interior views, which we are published in the internet, are without these horses and elephants. To give you an idea about the size of the room, which is not that large, but also not that small. Um, for instance, this is about one meter nine, and uh, this, freeze here is 56 centimeters in height, but we are concentrating on this scene on the eastern wall of the Badal Mahal, which is this one, because it shows the Badal Mahal within the Badal Mahal as a wall painting. And you see an old photograph, all the elephants and horses are still in place. The interesting thing is, that here in the center, you have Rao Ratan inspecting a painting. And this painting was given to him by apparently an artist squatting in front of him with more paintings. And when you look properly, uh, we, we cannot describe the whole painting. Um, you see here the Nachines or dancing ladies, the musicians, and you have people from uh, Africa like Malik Amba in the Deccan, because Rao Ratan was Sarbuland Rai. He was granted, he was something like the highest Rajput chief of the Deccan. And what you have here upstairs, this is the Badal Mahal. We are inside this room. This is the lower part of the Badal Mahal, which is also fully painted, but these paintings were done in the reign of. Uh, Rao Raja Ram Singh of Bondi in the 19th century. Um, interesting here is the fact that you have three figures standing in front of the Maharao and on first might think, oh, these are his sons, but they are much too small. These are puppets dressed as Mughal courtiers, as mentioned by Nicholas Downtown in his memorandum. Um, um, the memorandum says, what would please the Mughal emperor. And the Mughal emperor, Jahangir, as we know, has given 
many of these presents to some of his most beloved friends. Uh, Rao Ratan, it seems, was one of them. Oh, I have to go back a second. Um, this is also a sign of the Deccani influence. The gentleman in the back of the throne of Rao Ratan waves a shawl. Uh, instead of a chauri or chamara, which is usually used by the Hindu rulers. And um, you see the same objects again here in a quite famous Deccani painting, which is much earlier than the mural in the uh, um, um, Badal Mahal, where you, you see a half sleeping prince and he is fanned by a shawl and people try to wake him and people try to offer him a drink. This is one of the best paintings showing leisure and pleasure. Um, the Rao Latan holds a painting in his hand showing an elephant, which is about to run amok. And uh, the Mahout has here the Ankusha, that's a stick with a thorn on it, to pacify the elephant. There is a similar painting here uh, showing the young Akbar here with this ankush to pacify the elephant. This is not a contemporary painting. The artist has signed and dated the painting there on the stone. Uh, if I remember well, it's um, signed by Sain al Abidin and it's dated 16 oh, uh, sorry, 1609, if I remember well. Now here is the Badal Mahal. Down here was the court of Rao Ratan. And all these parts, as we have learned, this part as well as this part was not in existence when the painting, when the mural was done. What you see in, in the mural and still today is this um, sort of incised painting in red and white, which is typical for the Mughal technique. And uh, here again, you see that very um, niche or recess is still visible today. And here are the three puppets described earlier. Um, also here are these type of bracket figures, the elephants. And here are the same elephants from the mural on the uh, Western semi-dome of the Baral Mahal. Um, also the two windows still exist. Uh, the interesting thing is here on the Chaja, there are two pigeons walking because in the South Indian architecture, this part of the roof is still kapota. That means where the pigeons, kapota, are walking uh, on the chaja or sunshade here. Um, here you have chajas and uh, here, this is how it still looks today. Um, when I saw this, um, I thought I'm within the Sixtinian chapel of India. Um, I, have to curtail this, otherwise it's too long. Here are traces of Islamic architectural influence. Here on the western part is the Badal Mahal with Rao Ratan. And we'll see a few details from these paintings in the corners. As you can see here, they don't look very Mughal and they don't look very Rajput. Um, they are European gentlemen uh, wearing a fur coat, uh, boots, and this type of head, which reminds you of um, maybe Spanish people. And the interesting thing is we have the proof for this, um, where this is from. Um, I may quote a contemporary source. Um, Rao Ratan was stationed in Burhanpur. And uh, I quote from um, 
the travels of Peter Mundy, who writes in 1630 on 10th of November, at Burhanpur, they are to endeavor to recover from Raja Rao Ratan, that's our friend Rao Ratan, the amount due for some tapestry recently sold to him by Willowby. The price agreed upon was 18,450 rupees, that's enormous, of which 1,000 rupees were paid, while a secret was given for the rest. That secret is now in the hands of Kashi Das, Virji Vora's agent. It is uncertain whether the Raja is at Bahanpur or still in the Deccan. So Rao Ratan bought tapestry from Aras, which have such figures. Another very important factor about the Mughal influence, also Deccani influence on the murals of the Badal Mahal is the so-called Rambag or Arambag or Bag in Nur Afshan. Here in a photograph taken by uh, John Murray, MD, um, in the late 1850s, um, some people um, added quite a few structures. Um, today it looks like this here, the Northern Pavilion as it looked in 1979. In 1982, we had an extremely interesting seminar at the Victoria and Albert Museum, uh, headed by Robert Skelton, and I'm sure Andrew Topsfield will remember it. And um, I had shown frescoes from this part, which um, suddenly uh, Ebba Koch changed her topic for the printed volume and published a small but very important monograph on the architecture of the Bagh in Nur Afshan. Um, here is her plan published in these uh, proceedings. Unfortunately, all the illustrations are in black and white, also the photographs showing Rao Ratan, and we have the northern and the southern pavilion. And within these pavilions, we have vaults. Vaults A is here. And here is the vault B. And as you can see from these um, drawings, these are so-called squinches or squinch nets because the cupolas are resting on squinch nets. And this could almost be a copy from the Badal Mahal. I mean, here we imagine um, Rao Ratan looking at a miniature painting showing an elephant and um, all the structure here above, this is what we have in the Badal Mahal. Why is this so important? Well, the importance is we have a Dutch source, Francesco Pelsel, who describes Agra in, the, uh, in about 1610. And he says that the palace of Rao Bhoj. Rao Bhoj had a palace at Agra at the river Yamuna, and that palace was just opposite the, opposite the Rambad that we see here. So the founder of the Badal Mahal must have seen this or something like this. I, uh, if I remember well, Abba Koch dates it from 1609 onwards. Here we have some more paintings from the um, Aram Bag in the Squinchnitz to the left, we have an angel. His portrait, his uh, face is shown in three quarter view, and a dragon trying to fly behind um, apparently geese or ducks trying to devour them. Um, here you have a peacock spreading its tail and in the same um, rhombic form, you will see the peacocks here in the cupola of the Badal Mahal. And here you will see these winged fairies 
with these pompons at um, their wrists, which is typical for early 17th century Mughal paintings. Again, here the comparison to the left, we have a fragment of a mural from the uh, Rambak, and to the right, a painting from the Badal Mahal, a ringed figure playing um, the Indian uh, Rudrabina with just one um, uh, uh, pumpkin. Um, I understand that Milo Beach has done um, edition of Marg on the Bondi Palace and he himself has done a book on Bondi. I've seen neither, but I'm sure since uh, from what I gather from the Mark edition that so many scholars worked on the paintings of the uh, Bundi Palace, uh, they must have certainly seen this inscription analyzed and translated it. Um, I don't want to say it as an excuse, but I only, um, I've just been invited last Friday night to do this presentation and I had to scan all these slides first because as I said, all the paintings. Here, one of the pleasures of Rao Watan was playing polo. Um, polo was of course introduced by the Mughals from the Persian courts. And um, you see him here waiting for his chance. And you see both, you see one servant waving the chauri or chamara, which is made of the hair of the tail of a white yak, a boar's grunion, so that the tail has to be white. Um, otherwise it brings bad luck. Um, you can use a uh, chamara with black hair, but this is used exclusively for the Chani Puja, which is very dangerous. And um, here you have what I call the Dekani Chal. Um, this is a Chaogan or polo ground, which you have in many Rajput cities. Um, later, this was used as, um, should say, elephant fighting ground, but uh, I'm afraid there were too many paintings to show this. Um, this is how polo is being played still today here in Jaipur in the shade of one of these fortresses uh, protecting the Jaipur city. And um, here we come to an end, so we have time for discussion. Another photograph by Eugene Clutterbuck Impe uh, showing partly the bazaars, which were mentioned, but more interesting thing is all the old houses. And um, yes, this is actually the end of this uh, contribution. Fantastic, thank you so much. Um, this was really a wonderful um, um, opposition in a way of the architectural details, um, the building campaigns that we have, and then looking actually at the inside, looking at the art and seeing the cultural exchange um, from various uh, traditions, from the Deccan to Mughal traditions. Um, uh, to Rajput traditions, which is really fascinating. Also the different building typologies, of course, ranging from fortified architecture to the kind of palace architecture, which was integrated and quite different from the European context going on. Um, whereas, um, you know, fortified architectures stopped, you know, being used in, in, in Europe. I'd like to ask now um, our audience um, to ask some uh, questions or to comment. And um, our um, intern, Jan, will be taking questions from the audience. Um, hello. Yeah. Um, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat or, um, you know, raise a hand, you know, um, type, type in the chat and, um, yeah, we can call on you as well.
Um, yes, Sonica. Uh, my question, my question is for uh, Dr. Bauth. First of all, uh, thank you, sir. That was very, very informative. And I have been reading your books and articles, and uh, it was really insightful. So my question to you is regarding the inscription that you just so, uh, showed us. In fact, I've been to the Bundi Palace and I did notice the two inscriptions there. And I believe they probably are written by different hands. So do you believe those were uh, written right after the paintings were done or were they added later? And do you think there is a connection between the two inscriptions? One is on the top and one is right below it. Can I answer? Yes, please. Um, my hint is they are contemporary because all the later inscriptions that we have, and there are quite a few inscriptions in stone, uh, some of them start with Sri, Rangana, Chayati, et cetera, et cetera. And they, are, they are all in, in Nagari, all in Nagari script. But due to the strong uh, Mughal influence that I've tried to show, and I could show many, many more uh, interesting hints to that, um, I would say that these two inscriptions are contemporary. They, they, they don't seem to be very well written, it's, it's, um, but I think they are contemporary. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you so Good. much, Sonia. Any other questions, comments, thoughts? Esther, do you have any thoughts, comments, questions you'd like to ask to any of our speakers today? I just think because we, uh, we are a little bit, we're running a little bit late, so uh, we should uh, wrap it up here unless there are no more questions. Um, and if you have any more questions, please contact the Center for Historic Houses. Um, I think, Jan, have you shared our email address? I think you did, or Tiagi did, right? And um, of course, have a look at our website, Center for Historic Houses. We also are really keen to collaborate with other scholars. If you have an interesting project relating to historic houses of India, please write to us with suggestions. Um, I'm uh, happy um, to hear about it. We are also currently um, finishing one project on digital heritage um, that has been supported by JP Morgan Chase um, Tech for Social Good program, which will be um, Heritage at Risk Portal, which will be made public in July. And there's also Palace Day on the 19th of July with lots of events um, happening that we'll be organizing then. Thank you very much again for coming. Thank you for taking your time. It was really lovely to have so many and um, also distinguished colleagues um, from around the world. And um, thanks again to all of our speakers and especially Professor Bouts uh, digitizing these um, original photographs, um, which um, were taken in, when in the 1970s, these uh, photographs? Um, now the... No. Uh, a bit, a bit later, uh, 1981 onwards, because um, earlier, I'm, I mean, I, I have been in the Moti Mahal many times and they had their own office. And uh, in, in those days, there was no internet. You had to write an aerogram. And uh, I never received any reply to my requests. Um, they never told me how to contact uh, the people for the keys. And um, there were a few problems, but they were settled, but it took me a few years to do that. Um, and I just wanted to mention one thing. I had a really interesting uh, message from Amma, really right from the court hall. Um, you shared um, a link for some reason, you couldn't share it um, with the rest of the group. I don't know why, from um, opusconservation.co.uk. They have actually high resolution images of the Bad al Mahal paintings, which is really interesting. I've just shared them on our Twitter page. So we use, I mean, we have the different um, social media handles and we use our Twitter handle particularly for, um, to com communicate with uh, other scholars and colleagues. And um, many of the kind of more academic things are shared there. So I just um, share the Twitter handle once more in case you are interested. I've just shared the link there as well.
great. Center for Historic Houses of India, CHH. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.